it's all about how long the light has taken to get to us for us to take this image. So light has a set speed limit, 300,000 kilometers a second. So it's fast, but it still cannot go faster than that. That's what Einstein taught us. So everything we see around us is on a slight delay. So the sun's light, for example, left the sun eight minutes ago before it reaches us. The nearest star takes four years for light to get to us. The light from these galaxies took 13 billion years. So we're seeing these galaxies as they were 13 billion years ago, right after the Big Bang. And it's, it's almost like you can think of it as like the oldest light in the universe that we've finally been able to detect because it's light that actually the Hubble Space Telescope, for example, which is the predecessor to this telescope, can't detect because as that light travels for 13 billion years, it gets stretched out by the expansion of space to a wavelength that's longer than we can actually detect with our own eyes in visible light or with Hubble. So we had to build this infrared telescope, so wavelengths longer than red light, the kind of light that your TV remote uses to communicate with your with your television. You know, the kind of light we can't see, but this telescope has been designed to actually detect, and we've finally been able to spot it. It's all this light in the universe. What an awesome telescope the James Webb is. It's just so amazing. Talk us through some of the key things that have been captured in this particular image. Yeah, I mean, some of the things that jump out to me, you've got some incredibly bright stars, which are Milky Way stars. So stars in our own galaxy, our own island of stars in the universe. So they're sort of very much in the foreground. Then you've got very nearby galaxies as well. Those are the ones that you can see those beautiful shapes. They're sort of spiral and they look fabulous. And then you've also got very distant galaxies that have been sort of stretched out the light as well. They, they form these like curves and arcs that we actually call lenses. And that's because the, the galaxies that are in the way in the foreground from those very distant ones are acting like a lens. So if you've ever taken a stemmed wine glass and passed it in front of a candle, sounds like a very romantic evening, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and passed it in front of the candle and seen the light from the candle get bent around, the, around that sort of bottom of the wine glass, that's what's happening here but instead of you know glass bending light, it's actually the mass of the galaxy itself. It's all of the gravity of that of the foreground galaxies bending and magnifying the light from those distant ones. So those kind of things are really exciting to spot because it means that um, by acting as a lens, it brightens them and we've got more chance of studying these really distant galaxies. And we're seeing a wide range of colors we haven't seen before in mm. the early universe as a result. Exactly, yeah. So because the universe is expanding, because this, the light from these very distant galaxies gets stretched out, Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope, it took the exact same view of this part of the universe, of this part of sky, and everything just looked red because that's all the light that was left that Hubble could detect. Whereas the James Webb Space Telescope is now detecting the light that was given out at visible wavelengths that's now in the infrared and shifting it back again. So we're actually seeing light that we've never been able to detect before from the early universe in all of its in all of its glory and all of its colors that we couldn't see before. And those kind of colors tell us so much about what's going on. So, for example, very young, hot stars, lots of blue light because they're very hot. Lots of old stars are much redder because they're much cooler. And everyone goes, that doesn't make any sense. That's not what, like, taps on sinks have been telling me my entire life. Blue's supposed to be cold and red's supposed to be hot. But if you think about the flame on, say, uh, your cooker or a Bunsen burner, that's blue. It's very, very hot compared to like a candle flame, which is much cooler and it's red. So how significant is this achievement? What has it taken to get us to this point? I mean, decades, essentially. The James Webb Space Telescope was dreamt up in, in one form or another, you know, uh, almost as soon as the Hubble Space Telescope was launched back in the 90s. And it's been you know, 30 years of development and design and going back to the drawing board and changing things until it, we finally led up to the launch from Christmas Day 2021 last year. That was nerve wracking because we were all worried something was going to go wrong with the launch. You never know with space launches. Yes, I don't I know what was more stressful, cooking the, <laughs> cooking the Christmas turkey or a, a telescope launch. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I remember that completely. <laughs> we really didn't know what was going to happen. And to have this image come back to us finally, you, you must be so excited. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even just the law. We've had six months since then as well of nail-biting 
unfolding because this was the huge thing about this telescope. We needed an infrared telescope to see this light. The Earth's atmosphere absorbs infrared light. So you can't put a telescope on the ground to spot this. You have to put it in space. So if we were gonna do this, we needed to make it the best we possibly could. It had to be the biggest. Of course, big things don't fit in very skinny rockets, you know, for good air resistance. So it had to unfold once it got into space. And it's one of the first rules of space travel, right? It's no moving parts because something will go wrong. And thankfully, nothing did. It was something like 283 single points of failure. Uh, wow. in all of the unfolding and calibration process for this thing. So, you know, the past six months have been just as stressful as Christmas Day. And to be at this point, finally, where, you know, when I started my PhD uh, in 2013, this was all anyone could talk about was James Webb's coming soon, 2015, 2017, 2019. Yes. It kept getting pushed back. So to, to finally be here it almost doesn't quite feel real that we're finally getting uh, these images. And I mean, the one released uh, they say that we've been seeing is just a, a first taste. We're gonna get even more uh, later today or overnight for, for Australia as well. And I think those images that they're gonna release are gonna be like nothing we've seen before. Like the one last night was kind of what we'd expect in a way. We'd seen similar things with the Hubble Space Telescope. It's just these different colors, like you said, that we've not seen before. But the ones later today, day i i can't even call what they're going to look like there I'm, I'm just so excited to see what can we expect can you tell us yeah so we're getting an image of um, something called the carina nebula which one of the cool things about infrared light is that it's not blocked by dust so it's sort of just it's got a longer wavelength so it can just sort of bypass all these these sort of dust particles like carbon clumps of molecules in the universe that you know may eventually clump together and form a planet and when stars are forming, there's a lot of that around, so it blocks a lot of the light. And so with Hubble, we've never really been able to see what's what's through that dust. And James Webb's going to reveal that, and who knows, you know, what it'll find through it, um, which is very exciting. And then another thing I'm excited about is it's going to uh, take a look at the light from the atmosphere of a planet around another star, and tell us what's in that atmosphere, what signatures of light are in there to say ozone or methane or carbon dioxide are present and it's going to do that for one planet today and we're going to get a teaser but you know the next year is going to be more and more and more of those even maybe earth-like planets as well so excited and i can't wait to see those images dr becky smithers thanks so much for explaining that to us thank you